So in my search for a good ultra wide productivity monitor to replace my LG 34 inch, I came across the 40 inch from LG as well. So it's a 5K, 2K monitor that was just released this year. So I wanted to find out for myself if it's the best ultra wide 5K monitor in 2022. The monitor essentially has a nano IPS display with 98% uh, DCI-P3 wide color gamut. It's also got up to 72 Hertz of refresh rate as well as 5120 by 2160 resolution, which is awesome for you know a lot of high quality real estate. It's also got Thunderbolt 4 uh, support as well as some decent speakers. And honestly, the color accuracy on this thing is amazing. It's the best that I've used uh, up till now. But don't get too excited though. It's not a cheap monitor by any means at all, but it could be a justifiable expense if you're going to maximize all of its features. Let's talk about everything that makes this powerhouse what it is. Besides the monitor, LG provides one HDMI, one display port, one Thunderbolt, one USB-C, and one power cable with every purchase. One cool thing I noticed immediately was that there's no power block with the power cable, which is uncommon with most monitors. This is perfect for cable management. The back side of the monitor is white and the front side has a subtle 2500R curvature with black borders. The design is great and I reckon it'll fit into virtually any setup's aesthetic. There's also a light matte anti-glare coating that sort of eliminates reflections. The monitor is pretty thick and a bit heavy at 10.2 kilograms without the stand attached. Setting it up was toolless and quick. All you have to do is connect the separate stand pieces together and then mount the monitor on securely using the one-click system. The stand comes in silver and its overall design looks pretty great. There's also a silver cable management clip included for use with the stand. I personally find that it's okay but really doesn't do much for me so I might end up with a monitor arm that's got better cable management. If you already have a monitor arm you can mount onto that instead. The 100 by 100 millimeter VESA mount also makes it easy to mount onto the wall. The monitor can be raised up to a height of 110 millimeters, swiveled between minus 15 to 15 degrees and tilted up and down between 5 and 20 degrees. These all make it easier to adapt to different viewing angles. There's a directional joystick under the monitor for quick and easy control and access to the on-screen display. The back of the monitor houses a wide array of connectivity options. There's one Thunderbolt 4 input with DisplayPort 1.4 alt mode and 96 watts of power delivery. One Thunderbolt 4 output for daisy chaining with another monitor. One DisplayPort 1.4 input, two HDMI 2.0 inputs, a headphone jack, and two USB 3.0 downstream ports. Keep in mind that the HDMI ports are limited to 30 hertz at 5K resolution, so they're best used for the dual controller and picture by picture mode, which we'll get to later. Once the hardware is all set up, all that's left is to power the monitor, and then based on how you plan on using it, connect either using Thunderbolt 4, an HDMI cable, or a combination of both. I can confirm that you can get up to the maximum of 72 hertz refresh rate when using a Thunderbolt. I use mine primarily with my 2021 MacBook Pro through a single Thunderbolt 4 connection. Turning on auto input switch from the menu will automatically change the input source when a new one is detected. The monitor has a curved 39.7 inch nano IPS LED display with a wide 98% DCI-P3 color gamut, which is great for color reproduction. It's also got a 5120 by 2160 resolution which results in a high pixel density of 140 ppi, similar to a 32 inch 4K monitor. This means tons of space, sharper image quality and clearer text, which is great for high quality professional work. It's pretty much a 32 inch 4K monitor with about 33% more space to work with. At that pixel density I find that I can work without scaling but others might need to scale to see more clearly. Scaling does seem to work better on Windows than on Mac in my experience. The 21 by 9 aspect ratio of the screen has been amazing for seeing video editing timelines a lot better. It's one of the main reasons to go for an ultra wide to be honest. The monitor also supports 10 bit color depth and it's factory calibrated too so colors are great right out of the box. The monitor has HDR10 support but no local dimming feature so it's pretty much not worth using. I find that working in SDR works better and is pretty much enough for me. There's multiple picture presets to pick from for different effects. There's also advanced settings like color temperature, contrast and more that can be tweaked to one's satisfaction. The monitor has a low static contrast ratio of 1000 to 1 for black levels, so maybe not the best. It's also got a low maximum of 300 nits of brightness, and if you work in a very bright room, this could easily be a problem. As for me, my room is bright, but I've got blinds and drapes to black out the room anytime, so it doesn't really bother me. The screen also has an ambient light sensor for auto brightness. 
This is great for adapting the screen's brightness to different changes in room lighting throughout the day. For eye care, it's got reader mode, which has an integrated low blue light filter that helps in reducing eye fatigue, especially when using for extended periods. Now, this certainly wouldn't be my top choice for gaming or even my top 10 or top 20, but if you plan on mixing productivity and gaming on this monitor, you'll be glad to know it's got some pretty decent gaming stats. It supports AMD FreeSync use with a 48 to 72 hertz range for variable refresh rate. This will prevent screen tearing and stuttering as long as you don't exceed 72 frames per second while gaming. FreeSync can also be paired with compatible NVIDIA GPUs for a smoother gameplay experience. The monitor provides four response time overdrive modes off, normal, fast, and faster, but I just keep mine at normal all the time. Dynamic Action Sync is a feature that you can use to lower the input lag, which is impressive at roughly 10 milliseconds. Not the best out there, but still pretty impressive. Black Stabilizer brightens dark scenes with a small sacrifice to the contrast. The inbuilt speakers on it are pretty decent. You can get by with them for most use cases, but if you're a professional that requires great audio quality for your work, then you'll want to look into investing in better external speakers if you don't already have a set. So by that I mean, for example, you work with vocals. Welcome to Hogwarts Legacy. You're a new student at the famed school of witchcraft and wizardry. Picture by picture is a feature that comes built into the monitor for connecting and displaying two devices on the screen at the same time. You can connect both devices using any of the connectivity methods. A great scenario where it'll come in handy is if you want to connect the Windows and Mac system to the same monitor. That's how I use it. The monitor has LG's dual controller feature as well, which works just like a KVM switch, allowing you to control two PCs through one set of keyboard and mouse. Just make sure they're connected to your main PC, not the monitor, and that both PCs are on the same network as well. Apparently, it also requires that one of the PCs be connected to a monitor via HDMI. It's a handy feature if you work with dual PC setups. Now, based on my experience using this monitor, there isn't much to dislike about it, besides some common issues related to, you know, IPS panels in general. Issues like IPS glow, which is very easy to manage and get past, as well as low contrast ratio, which I don't really notice, you know, while working with it. There's also the low peak brightness and less than optimal HDR support, but those aren't the main reasons why I picked this up. Finally, the price is not very appealing at all. It's $2,600 after taxes. That's how much I paid for it. Unless you plan on maximizing all that high quality screen real estate and its feature set, I do not recommend getting it. There's other options out there for less money. For gaming, this is definitely not what you want. You'd want something like the Alienware 34 inch QD OLED ultra wide if you want an ultra wide for gaming. Now for professional work, you'll be earning with it. So it's definitely a justifiable expense. All in all, the LG 40 inch 5K ultra wide is one of the best productivity monitors I've come across in 2022. Find out more about it through the link in the description below. Also, let me know in the comment section what you guys think about a high-end productivity monitor like this one. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until next time, it's Tommy with Midas Tech, and I'm out.